Today, um, I am going to talk about uh, a little bit about diet. Um, let me pull up my talk here. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay. Just a moment. All right. Don't worry, I don't need any slides or anything. Um, before, last time I was talking, uh, last time I spoke up here, I uh, shared a little bit about my diet uh, change that I had in my life. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I also spoke about having gone to Wildwood and learned a lot over there. Well, um, during, that, during that time, the Lord answered his promise to me, and uh, he taught me a lot about how to change my diet and how to uh, eat right, and I want to share some of that with you. A lot of it was based on the Bible, and a lot of it was based on spirit of prophecy, uh, ministry of healing, and so on. So uh, let me share some of the things that I learned. <coughs> Well, all right, have, how many of you have ever heard of the health reformer diet? Okay, okay, okay. I didn't know what that was until I went to Wildwood. Never heard of it. And when I got there, I learned a little bit more about it. In, in short, like if I need to explain it to someone in the world, I, I will usually say something like, it's a vegan diet except there are some exceptions. We can eat honey, but we don't drink wine. <laughs> um, we tend to, uh, we can wear leather if we want to, but we kind of tend to stray from vinegar and chocolate and things like that. And also we tend to eat massive amounts of, of what? Fruit, okay, what else? Soy, yes, that's what I'm looking for. What else? What do you like to sprinkle on your food? Salt. Oh, yeah, too much salt. And a lot of yeast flakes. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, anybody ever heard of chickenish? Yes, do you, most of the world hasn't. <laughs> so that's pretty much our thing. Um, now, one of the things that I thought was interesting is a thing called vinegar. Uh, what would you call vinegar? Vinegar is? It's what? Sour wine, exactly. You know, I was going to teach you guys, but I think you guys already know the answers. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty much wine gone bad. And um, there's actually a lot of people talk about wine in the world. They're like, oh, yeah, wine is so delicious and so wonderful. If you, you know, when you go out there, you hear a lot of people talking about that. The thing is, um, the world will say that polyphenolic, yeah, flavonoids are in wine, and it actually makes wine good. But unfortunately, um, it still has a lot of the negative side effects. The thing about wine, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, uh, is that it's made of grapes. You guys know that grapes also have the uh, polyphenolic, uh, <laughs> polyphenolic flavonoids. Um, what exactly are those? Does anybody know the benefits of that? The polyphenic, um, what I can't pronounce, I'm sorry? Exactly, okay, anti-inflammatory. It helps to prevent cancer, it helps to uh, promote um, low blood sugar, low cholesterol, and also helps with memory, digestion, and, um, and prevents blood clots. Basically, it has a lot of antioxidant properties, which is a good thing. So, <clears throat> as I was learning this at Wildwood, one of the things that, that came to me was, um, I was also learning about the sanctuary. Those uh, polyphen... <laughs> Who can pronounce it for me? 
Flavonoids, thank you. It's just the flavonoids, the pea flavonoids. All right. Those are actually found mostly in fruits and vegetables that are red, purple, and blue. And I thought, whoa, red, purple, and blue. It's just like the, the door of the sanctuary, the gate of the sanctuary. And um, that was one way that I remembered it most easily. Um, so who's, who knows, or who can tell me one, f- one fruit or vegetable that's red? Apple. Strawberries, apples, okay. Okay, good. Watermelon, cherries. Well, that, that's mostly green, but yeah, red on the inside. Uh, what about... <laughs> it's green and red. Pomegranates. Red peppers? <laughs> yeah, red peppers. Chilies. <laughs> We're going to talk about that, too. <laughs> All right, bro- broccoli? <laughs> it's green. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, give me something purple. <laughs> Grapes. Good. And what? Eggplant. Purple, Egg purple plant. cabbage, yeah. Eggplant, good. Okay, give me something that's blue. Blueberries. Blueberries, everyone loves blueberries, yeah. You guys like the blueberry smoothies? Mm-hmm, very healthy, okay. So, flavonoids, all right. And what? Oh, eggplant, yeah, that's purple, yeah, mostly. Okay, yes. So um, this is actually something that has been noted by the National Institutes of Health, um, that, that uh, uh, these foods have antioxidant properties. Okay. Uh, moving on. I, uh, then I also mentioned chocolate in my last talk, right? I said, yeah, I gave up chocolate. But do you guys know why I gave up chocolate? Because it has caffeine, and what, is, what does caffeine do? It's a drug. Oh, it's a drug. <laughs> yes. Okay, what else? You can get addicted to it. You can get addicted to it. It's very addicting. Okay. Anybody here addicted? No, I'm just joking. Don't, don't answer. Don't answer. All right. It is actually an amphetamine, and it is uh, amphetamine. It's in the same family with amphetamines. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know that? And it's actually a close cousin to cocaine and nicotine. Yeah. So, you know, when I found that out, I was like, oh, I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my body. Um, it also has a strong effect on your nervous system, and it uses up a lot of your energy stores. So that, you know, you drink uh, coffee or something, and you're like, wow, wired. Uh, unfortunately, it, you know, you'll crash after that. And then you'll have to have another one, and then you'll crash, and then you'll have to have another one. And over time, it uses up your, your stores of energy, like um, basically that you need for fight or flight responses and things like that. So, moving on. Uh, I also noticed that um, at Wildwood, they tended to abstain from a lot of the condiments that we have, like uh, ketchup, and you know, which has vinegar in it. Um, they would... Uh, also, at their tables, they would have these little salt shakers, but in it was salt and cayenne pepper and flaxseed and, well, they had a container for flaxseed and yeast flakes. Yeast flakes. <laughs> I thought that was great. Um, the cayenne pepper was pretty interesting. Uh, it turns out that, well, okay, I'm not going to tell you guys. Tell me, what is actually the benefit of cayenne? What can it be used for? Increase blood flow. To stop a stroke? Depends on the type of stroke, yeah. Um, some people also use um, nutmeg for that. Under the tongue. Hmm? <laughs> Unclog your nostrils. <gasps> I, I, yeah, I know, but I, I, you know, it depends on how you take it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it can unclog your nostrils, yes. Um, I also noticed that spicy and fried foods were missing from the kitchen, the cafeteria, and uh, most fermented foods weren't there. Hmm, that was interesting. Um, Let's see, let's see, moving on. Yeah. Who can tell me some of the benefits of flaxseed? Omega-3 fatty acids, yeah. Who said that? Back there? Nice. 
Okay. And uh, what else? It relieves constipation, yes. I'm sorry? Fiber. Uh, yeah, it does have fiber. Okay. Yeah, anything else? It actually helps your skin. Anybody know that? Thank you. Face mask. Okay, yes. If you can crush it up, boil it, and put it all over your face, put it in your hair. Gel. All right, good girls know. Look at that. Okay. Um, let's see. What else is it good for? It's actually good for reducing your cholesterol levels, lowering your sugar cravings. So if you're like, I, I want some donuts or something, you can just take some flaxseed. And, yeah, balances your hormones, lowers your weight, uh, helps pr pr uh, promote good intestinal function, and yes, again, combats cancer. So, yeah, we have a lot of nutritional yeast flakes. And can someone tell me what those are good for? Uh, seasoning. <laughs> seasoning, yeah. B12, that's actually the major one, B12. A lot of vegan diets don't have B12 in them because B12 primarily comes from the animal kingdom. Um, the wonderful part of being vegan is that we can take a fruit from the tree, rub it on your shirt and eat it, and you get a little bit of B12 there. Mushrooms actually have a little B12, but it doesn't tend to store it in the mushroom very well. Uh, so we tend to fortify our foods like soy products, and uh, we have plenty of those, so don't worry. Um, and the uh, brewer's yeast, which we just take the nutritional yeast flakes. And also, let's see, there's another one on my list. Ah, some fermented foods. Actually, maybe kimchi. Who knows? Is that a shameless plug for kimchi? I'm sorry. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> although you probably want to reduce your fermented food intake um, on the whole. So uh, B12, what is good about B12? Anybody know? What is? Yeah, it helps your nervous system. Uh, it would actually help uh, your... Uh, Cognitive function staves off Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Anything else? Anybody know? You guys are like, I'm taking B12, but I don't know what it does. <laughs> okay, all right. How about heart disease? Helps to reduce heart disease uh, chances, risks of heart disease. It uh, helps to repair your DNA. You guys know that? Yeah, it helps promote younger life, long life. So um, it produces energy and endurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we should put that on our food, uh, the yeast flakes. Okay. All right. Now, yeah, I continued to live at Wildwood for a while and took some classes. And um, one of the things about food in general uh, that I didn't know, well, I could have guessed, was that uh, most of our lifestyle habits come from Eden. And uh, I was looking at the, the Eden diet, and let's, I'm going to actually share five, five different diets that are in the Bible, that are mentioned in the Bible. And, yeah, you guys probably know all of this already, right? So, uh, what's the first diet mentioned in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Fruits, vegetables, and grains, right? Nuts and grains. Okay, actually, was it vegetables? No. Exactly. Okay, it was after the fall that we were allowed to eat. Yeah. We were allowed to eat uh, vegetables. Um, believe it or not, God said, See, I've given you every plant producing seed on the face of the earth, and every tree which has fruit producing seed, they will be for your food. In Genesis 1, verse 29. And it also, uh, he, he also basically said that the animals would have the pulse of the ground, basically the, the plants that came up from the ground that didn't have, uh, didn't have seed in, in them. 
So, and originally, radishes were for animals only, believe it or not. And carrots, that's probably where the rabbits eat them. So, uh, let's see. After sin, before the flood, uh, we were given a different diet. And that was basically because I, th- I, I personally believe that this is why... Uh, that God did this for, uh, for us. So he gave us an appreciation for work. He gave us an appreciation for his diet to um, help us to understand the importance of doing things his way and to uh, give us, um, uh, what, what can I say? Help us to focus on truth and doing what's right rather than um, uh, seeking evil pursuits. Now, the, uh, the uh, third diet that I'd like to mention actually came after the world had been around for a while. People had been doing their own thing, kind of mixing good with evil, and thought it was okay. And God's like, guys, that's not the way to do it. Come on. And so he looked across the whole face of the earth, found Noah, a righteous man who wanted to do what God said. And he's like, okay, Noah, I have a plan, and we're going to start over, and I want you to be the one to help start it with me. So Noah, of course, did his work, built the boat. The animals went into the boat, and God reset the planet. When everyone got out of the boat, out of the ark, what was there to eat? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so what was the natural thing that God had to do? I'm sorry? He could, or he could have dropped manna down from heaven. <laughs> we see that later in the Bible. He could have done that, but yes, he told them they could eat meat. And this was an opportunity for them to uh, kind of destroy the animal population, yes, but um, to also shorten their lives. Um, and sustain their lives at the same time. Uh, do you think it was God's plan that we continue to eat meat indefinitely? No. Sometimes. Oh, why? Why sometimes? Because some people are dirt poor and they got nothing better. <laughs> They're dirt poor and have nothing better. Okay. All right. Um, possibly, yeah. Uh, but, uh, and <laughs> consider that when the plants started growing, the trees started producing fruit. People had another option, right? So now there, there are the previous two options. There's fruit, and there's vegetables, and there's meat. So people have three choices. They can choose what they want to eat. Now, God gave us the ability to eat this food uh, with the provision. Don't, put, don't eat it with the blood in it. The blood is where the life is. And... He also gave hints, little hints along the way. The animals that went into the ark, they had the, uh, the clean ones were in sevens and the unclean ones were in twos. So he made a dichotomy there also. And uh, in, well, I would like to say that I believe that God wouldn't want people to die at this point simply because there was nothing green to eat after the flood. He certainly didn't want them to be diseased by blood. Do we have a problem today with uh, diseased food? Mm -hmm. Would you guys say that the meat has a problem? Yeah. Would you guys say that the vegetables have a problem? Yeah, even even the vegetables have a problem. Okay, would you say the fruit on on, on the whole has a problem? Yes. Okay. So which one would you say is a better choice? Plant-based, well, we just said they're all diseased, so what's the problem? Okay, why would you say that, that plants or fruit is, is a better choice? Say that again? Because between bad and worse, it's better to choose bad. <laughs> between bad and worse, it's better to choose bad. <laughs> yeah, why would you choose worse? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, in these days, even the Food and Drug Administration is, is saying that processed meats are not good for us to eat. To, to eat. 
It actually says, they actually are saying that. And they're telling the world that um, it's better to choose the foods with, with um, the plant-based uh, the plant-based diets that have um, more chlorophyll and more uh, nutrition in them. Let's move on. Oh, ca uh, CDF. What is CDF? Councils on Diet and Foods. Yeah, Councils on Diet and Foods. Page 730, uh, 330, 373. It says, After the flood, the people ate largely of animal food, and God permitted that only uh, that long lived that uh, and God permitted that long lived race to eat to eat animal food and to shorten their sinful lives. And soon after the flood, the race began to rapidly decrease in size and in length of years. So it shortened our lives. Moving on, fourth diet I'd like to share was introduced after Israel was in bondage in a diseased land. Exodus chapter 16, verses 4, 5, and 12 to 15 pretty much spotlight this. It talks about God talking to Moses. They had a little conversation. He said, he's basically saying, uh, I'm going to give you guys some food for um, six days. It's going to rain down manna. And on the sixth day, it's going to come down twice as much. On the seventh day, don't go out. Don't even bother going out to collect manna because um, that's the Sabbath. I want you guys to rest. It'll be great. Now, the people went outside, and they saw this thing that looked like hoarfrost. It's like white, you know, looked like snow crystals on the ground. They picked it up, scooped it up. They're like, wow, this is pretty good. What is it? What is it is manna <laughs> in their language. And interestingly enough, at the, fir at the first sight of manna, God also rained down quail. So there was a transition period where... God said, hey, you can, you can have as much meat as you want. It's right there in your camp. Enjoy. But we're going to try and wean you off the meat and take you to this thing called manna. So that was a different diet plan that God had given them. And after that, there was no more meat, and it was just manna. So they looked around and went, wow, this is, this is interesting. But I think they missed the meat too much. What happens to us is... Um, um, in uh, MM 277 Spirit of Prophecy says the Lord intends to bring his people back to live upon simple fruits vegetables and grains he led the children of Israel into the wilderness where they could not get a flesh diet and he gave them the bread of heaven men did eat angels' food. How would you feel if manna fell down on our campus today? Yes. Woohoo! Think about it. What if, what if we went outside and the dew was actually, you know, the ground was covered with what we thought was snow. It was actually manna from heaven. You would eat it up? Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Take your shoes off. Why? Holy ground. Ooh, that's deep. Okay, anybody else? What would you do? What would you be thinking? Praise God. Okay. Now, it probably happened if we didn't have any food here. But consider that this, if they had realized what they were eating, they would have reacted differently. If they had realized that this was set before angels in heaven, before God, they would probably have respected it a lot more. Consider that God is giving us bread from heaven every day from in his word. And, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's something to remember. God's intention to bring them up higher, uh, actually God intends to bring us up higher also, um, by giving us these rich blessings uh, from heaven. Now, the desert was their training ground, and God didn't want them to lack for anything, so he gave them a promise that you know, he's going to take them into the promised land. 
give them barley, vine fi uh, vines, figs, pomegranates, and olive oil, and honey. Yeah, we eat honey. <laughs> and that without scarcity. So that's good stuff. And he did it. The good part is that we have another diet, the fifth diet I'd like to share with you that I discovered while I was at Wildwood. This one it kind of comes in two parts, where the first diet that we looked at was one that was given after creation um, in a state of perfection. The second diet that we were given was the one that was given after the fall. Uh, the one, the third diet that we looked at was after the flood and the cleansing of the world for the first time. The fourth diet was given after uh, leaving a land of disease. The fifth diet uh, comes after the, the earth is reset by consuming fire. In Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6, and 9, 6 to 9, it says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the lion, the young lion, and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze side by side. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and they shall not hurt in all God's holy mountain. <clears throat> kind of paraphrasing a little bit. That is the first part of the diet. It affects the animals. Just as the third diet affected the animals by us eating them, and this one is reset, where they are not hurt. Amen? In Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. That's just, to me, that's a trip. <laughs> I, I just have to stop there. Tree of life on both sides of the river. This river is probably miles long, I don't know, miles wide. And you have a tree of life on both sides growing up. And in that, there was... Uh, it bore 12 manner of fruit, yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were up for the healing of the nations. That is going to be our heritage in heaven. So, when I looked at this information, and I began to see my life through God's eyes and through his plan for my, my diet, his, his lifestyle plan, my decision was to change my eating habits, not for the animals, not for the climate, not for the earth, but for my own mental, spiritual, and physical health. I decided that I was going to make a difference and I was going to uh, clean the temple of my mind and my heart and my life and my body. And I wanted to create that clean environment for the Holy Spirit to live and dwell within me. That was my decision, and that's why I made that choice. I wanted to hear God speak to me every day of my life, as often as he wanted to. And so I made the decision to follow the laws of health. Even the same laws that they kept in Eden. Now you also have an opportunity to follow the laws of health. It's up to you guys. Whatever you want to do, I know most of you are already doing it. So I'm talking to the cameras. <laughs> but consider that God wants to live in your heart, live in your mind, and live in your soul. Your, your body, your mind, is truly, truly, and even in a very literal way, the temple of God. And he does live within you. Clean house. Amen? Amen. 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 All, right. All right. So do we have a song? Prayer. Prayer. Okay. All right. Let's kneel for prayer.
And dear loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to <clears throat> to clean our hearts and our minds by your word and by the, the understanding that you've given us. Um, Lord, I, I want to thank you that you call us a temple, a house that, that God can live in, that your Holy Spirit can reside in our minds and our bodies. Lord, I want to thank you for giving us messages that will, uh, that will strengthen the high priests of our cells, the, the lymphatic system, the white blood cells, and, and so they will go on a mission to cleanse our bodies of viruses and of, of bacteria. And Lord, I ask that the food we put in our, in our bodies strengthen our defenses within our, our bodies and within our minds so that we can stand true for you, having a complete system that works well, um, that has perfect circulation. Lord, I ask that you as the great physician give us excellent health. Thank you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.